I'm privileged to speak here today about what may prove to be the most important issue for our nation and the world in the 21st century, and that is the United States' response in the global ambitions to the global ambitions of the Chinese Communist Party. The CCP rules with an iron fist over one of the great ancient civilizations of the world. It seeks to leverage the immense power, productivity, and ingenuity of the Chinese people to overthrow the rule-based international system and to make the world safe for dictatorship. How the United States responds to this challenge will have historic implications and will determine whether the United States and its liberal democratic allies will continue to shape their own destiny or whether the CCP and its autocratic tributaries will continue to will control the future. What I want to say following the globalist plan and the Patriot counterattack piece comes out of um, some comments by A.G. Barr, Attorney General William Barr, and, um, and Mike Pompeo. And um, I think we're going to be hearing a lot about China over the next months. And I just want um, you to be aware that the reason, and I need to point this out again, is because the globalists were using China and that and they were building up China that's why all of our businesses in fact not just us but a lot of countries have their supplies coming from China and I think we need to look at what are the real risks of that of confronting that setup because there's some real risks in there for us and it could be pretty uncomfortable for a while remember the statement three weeks from now you'll arrive at the door to your future and then when we got to july it was like you're at the door july is the door and so i was kind of looking watching thinking okay we're at the door and it doesn't seem like it's any different and then the bar gave a little talk um up here in michigan on july 16th when i was listening to bar uh, my hair kind of stood on end when he said the U.S. response to the global ambitions of the Chinese party is the most important issue for the U.S. and the world right now. He didn't say it quite that way, but those were the words. Our response and how we respond is going to determine our future in the U.S., and the rest of the world. And when he said that, I was like, oh, there's the subject. All that other stuff, yeah, that's Antifa and the riots and the protests and all that kind of stuff, that's bad. Um, that's difficult to deal with. But the, I think the kernel inside all that and the reason a lot of that stuff is happening is to distract us from the real issue. And so what is the real issue? Um, the real, and this is where I say that there's some risk in here for us. How we respond is critical for us. If, if the real issue is that China is going to be confronted, and it is, not China, just the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party. I want you to separate the Chinese people who are really wonderful people from the Communist Chinese Party, which is really rules like an iron fist. And that is one of the things that Barr pointed out, um, that they are really ruthless in many ways. Um, so if the cabal, okay, the cabal is a group of businesses, global multinational businesses, um, and I forget the name of the study, could probably look that up, but the study came out a few years ago and it was done by a couple of scholars, I think on the East Coast maybe of the U.S. And they had done a study of, of the various businesses in, uh, that were running the world, big, big companies. And what they got down to was this, um, they, they made this map or this graphic that showed that there were about 200 companies 
running the entire globe, running everything. And they were connected to all the rest. And they, and those, um, I think those, I think they said those businesses were being run by a handful of families. And as soon as I heard that, I thought, oh, there's the families that the little men of brown robes referred to numerous times and in their uh, statements and all the things they showed me about the rise of business to power, which of course I didn't figure out what that was until just recently. It's like, oh, okay, the rise of business to power, that's the rise of the, the globalist cabal plan and they are running everything so um what um what bar said is that uh that we have a dragon on our hands over there in china and they are waking up now i think that that dragon is probably gonna go nipping at the heels of the chinese communist party um because there's a lot of suffering that's coming for china in spite of the fact that they now are the biggest manufacturers in the world, how can you manufacture anything if you can't feed your people? And that's where they're at, is they've lost all their crop, um, they're flooded, um, and now there's a couple of hurricanes or typhoons coming at their east coast. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> all those poor people. So, um, so what, what A.G. Barr said is we have to understand that um, we have lost our technological advantage or we're right on the edge of losing that technological advantage and that China was making all the cell phones, all the computers, all the chips used in military equipment, everything, and they were embedding uh, spy software in everything. And at the time I heard about TikTok, TikTok and WeChat being spy uh, systems, I thought, what would they want to be doing that for? What do they care? Who's doing what over here? Well, the reason they care is because the uh, cabal was using them, setting them up, to run the entire world the way the CCP is running China. Absolute and utter domination. You don't step out of line. China's lost a lot of its um, ingenuity and innovation because of the very strict control. Nobody can say anything that's real. They have to talk and walk the party line or they're in trouble and if they don't, they may uh, be jailed and their family will be punished and people are very afraid of causing trouble to their family. So what was happening with TikTok and WeChat, which are very popular apps here in the US, was that the cabal, not so much the CCP, the cabal is collecting information when people are working on projects together, they're sharing documents, they're having phone conversations, they're talking about technical details, etc. China was taking all of that and saying, we don't, we don't have to innovate. We can just get our stuff from the U.S. They're totally open, suckers. And we were. And so they took a lot of technology, they took a lot of secrets, they did a lot of spying, they had a lot of stuff that was happening here that they were um, using to, to get information. But more than anything, they were tracking who are the troublemakers and what are those people uh, saying and how do we get them to uh, give us all sorts of information about them. And, and so what have we handed over in the U.S.? We've handed over our fingerprint. You just put your finger on a phone and now you have fingerprint ID or eye. Just look at the eyes. All the irises of every, everybody's eyes are completely different. So you're totally unique there. Um, they've had this little game about, oh, you can turn in your, um, your blood uh, profile and you you can what is that called 23 and me they're finding out who's got what kind of unique 
um, blood or bloodlines or DNA, et cetera, et cetera. Um, heritage, all of that. They're tracking who's connected to who in terms of family. And, and they, they were getting ready to use all of that to control the U.S. the way China is controlled. And stepping through very, very carefully. And this is what A.G. Barr and Pompeo um, really were warning about. It. So a point that I really want to clarify here is that the cabal and China are kind of in bed together and all of those corporations that were in China are also in the hands of the cabal and all of the, that is the cabal and that is why so many rules were made uh, to make business um, uh, faultless, like you couldn't sue them for anything. It was uh, a fascist kind of move to take over the world. The businesses wanted to run the world. They wanted to take that away from governments. And that's what they've been moving toward. And this is what VAR is warning against. And I think it's really critical, is that we see that connection between the cabal, the CCP, and all the big corporations. And there's a couple things that, um, that A.G. Barr said that I think are really critical. So here's some things that he said. Um, the PRC has a wide array of predatory tactics and everything from currency manipulation to tariffs to quotas to state-led strategic investments and acquisitions in the U.S. Uh, theft, just out and out theft. Forced transfer of intellectual properties, state subsidies for a lot of those um, companies in China, dumping, they dump stocks, they dump, um, if you don't behave, you don't do what they say, they dump your, your stocks. Uh, cyber attacks all over the place and industrial espionage. Um, and it says 80% of espionage is that the U.S. is fighting against right now is, uh, involves the communist, Chinese Communist Party. So in 60% of all trade secret theft cases are with China. So that's telling us China is not as benign as we have always thought they were, as we would like to think they were. Um, the PRC wants to dominate key trade routes and infrastructure everywhere, in Eurasia, in Africa, in the Pacific, and eventually in the U.S. <coughs> Um, and he points out one third, that's a huge percentage, one third of all world trade passes through the South China Sea. And the People's Republic of China has claimed nearly that entire waterway and said, no, it's, it's ours. And fortunately, people are pushing back. Um, and so they've, they've flouted international rules put out by international courts. They've built artificial islands and immediately put military outposts on them and then harassed all the neighborhood ships, even the fishing boats. So everybody, and then when you harass people constantly, it, it's um, people tend to leave you alone and that's what they want. They want to be left alone to dominate that waterway. Um, the One Belt, One Road initiative was originally put out there as, oh, come on, we're going to help you build your company, your country. We're going to help you um, become and be part of this amazing initiative. Um, we'll give you millions of dollars. So, um, so they did. Um, but they were really just setting up strategic uh, interests. And so um, what they did was not give company or countries, um, they didn't give countries money, they gave them loans. And maybe at reduced rates, but maybe not, because some of those countries were not very sophisticated. And, and so once they had this country loaded with debt, um, and I'm thinking of Sri Lanka here, um, they, they took over a port in Sri Lanka, and Sri Lanka then said, hey, wait a minute, we didn't think you were going to control everything. And China just said, too late, sorry. <clears throat> so they, um, 
So China then refused to renegotiate. And, and then when the whole port was built, they took control of the entire infrastructure. That same thing has happened in LA to some extent up in the Seattle area. And I'm not sure, but I think also in New York. So they have um, their digital Silk Road infrastructure that they plan to use. They want to dominate the entire world. Everything will go over this uh, Silk Road uh, kind of a, a, a internet thing. And, and Barr part, or points out, he says, wow, it's a grave mistake to allow a global dictator to build the next generation of digital infrastructure because then they control everything. And that also, that digital infrastructure also allows them con to control space. Once you control the space around the planet, that's like controlling the, the uh, ocean or the land around, uh, I mean, the ocean around your land, um, those become your waterways. And if China's in control of that, who knows what they're going to say or what kind of deals they're going to make with beings who are already in space. And there are beings already in space. Um, he said China plans to lead the world in AI by 2030. So um, that's kind of scary. Um, AI has some absolutely fabulous uses, and I think we have to develop that and, um, and put our our big girl panties on, our big boy panties on, and, and stop being afraid. Um, yes, anything that's really powerful can be used for good or evil, but we want to use it for good. And we want to make sure that that is used for good. Um, but he, but Barr points out, whoever emerges as a leader in AI will unlock considerable economic potential and a range of military uses. And that is that fits right in with their plan to run the world. And that what I had seen is that the cabal was using China. Come on, China, we'll set you up. We'll get you these corporations. We'll help you build this. We'll give you technology. We'll sneak you all kinds of software. We'll give you plans for this, that, whatever. And um, and then the cabal's plan was to collapse China and run that. And we may be seeing some of that now because of the infighting that is beginning to emerge in the CCP, within the CCP, they're under tremendous pressure. And, and I think they've been had, basically. So um, Barr points out that, the, that China has monopolized rare earth materials used in consumer electronics, computer devices, medical devices, electric vehicles, military hardware, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't know, about a year ago, I read that, I think it was the University of Tennessee had discovered a way to take coal, uh, I'm not sure if it was coal or coal byproducts from coal and uh, re-engineer those into rare earth metals. That story came out and then it immediately died. I was so excited. I thought, oh, look, at we uh, have been, uh, we used to be quite a, a big producer of rare earths because you, you need them in all computer equipment. Um, and uh, something happened. All that production went to China and it is expensive to produce rare earth materials. But um, all of China has now control of, of the majority of those rare earth uh, products and um, I, I'm i not sure what happened with the University of Tennessee uh, or what. I'm hoping that we still have that technology and even if we've given it to China um, that maybe they could use some of that, what do they call that when you recapture uh, pollution and smog and, and coal byproducts and all that, maybe they could clean up their air a little bit using some of that technology. Um, but the, the thing is that uh, China has shown that it will not um, be, if you don't do what they say, they'll just say, oh, 
you can't have any more of that. You can't have any more rare earths. If they're also making most of our food, what do we do then? If we don't do as they say, they quit shipping food or clothing or computers or telephones or whatever, because all of that production is over there. Um, and, and so since 2010 or 11, um, China has been the biggest producer of world goods, hands down, hands down. So I think um, it's really important that, um, that we begin to, to realize the connection between China, the cabal, and the big businesses. Let me talk about Xi Jinping for just a minute. Um, he has centralized power to a huge degree. Um, and he wants to move China to the center stage. And this is a quote from Barr. He wants to move China to the center stage, building a socialism that is superior to capitalism and replace the American dream with a Chinese solution. When I heard that, my thought was, it sounds like Nazi talk, the final solution. That's not a talk that is inviting the final solution. Ah, anyway, um, and here's, here's a, something to keep in mind. China is no longer hiding its strength. One of their uh, old sayings, uh, Deng, Xiao, Deng Xiaoping used to say, um, just hide your strength. Bide your time. Hide your strength. Bide your time. And China's not hiding its strength anymore, and it's not biding its time. The People's Republic of China is now in an economic blitzkrieg to seize the heights of global economy, and um, and that includes they they basically want to surpass the U.S. as the superpower. And they have instituted this Made in China 2025 initiative. And what that, what that includes is they want absolute and utter domination by 2025 of high-tech robotics, advanced information technology, electric vehicles, aviation, and many, many more. But those, all those things, the high tech, robotics, advanced information tech, um, all those are used in military and offensive or defensive kinds of weaponry. And, uh, and I can't see that they would develop that and then put it on the shelf or use it to enjoy the flowers they would use it because they want to be the next superpower. So I think we need to keep that in mind. And what Barr warns is that uh, free and fair competition with China is a fantasy. So um, there's a lot of things that I think we're going to be hearing, like I said, about China over the next few years, even over the next few months. Now I want to talk about um, just a little bit about the risks to us. There's a couple of things that, that I think are big risks to us. Um, if all of our goods and services are coming from China, which we just had a little taste of that with the COVID-19 thing, no masks, no tests, no, um, uh, what do you call it, ventilators or other things that were needed, a lot of drugs, a lot of that stuff coming from China, we couldn't get it. Uh, what? Here's the risk to us. Are we in a position where we can be self-sufficient, where we can produce what we need? There's 330 or 350 million people in the U.S. Can we take care of ourselves? One bad year in the garden and, and people are hungry. Uh, what happens when your shoes wear out? You know, maybe your shoes are going to come from Italy and that'd be okay. But a lot of stuff is made in China. And, and so I think that's really an important piece. The, um, I think that whole risk to us 
is that if we say, okay, we're going to confront China, we're going to tell our politicians, uh, you have to do something about this, you have to make new trade deals, which Trump has been doing, um, there's still going to be a period of time in there where if we start sanctioning China, they're going to stop sending us goodies. If they stop sending us goodies, then our shelves at our stores are going to be much more empty than they already are. And we're not prepared for that. If you're ordering from Amazon, a lot of that stuff is coming from China. People buy stuff from manufacturers and then they resell. And it comes from China. So uh, Pompeo gave a... Uh, a press conference not long after A.G. Barr gave his talk in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And, and I was listening to Pompeo, and, and I was struck by the fact he was talking about the motivations um, and, and people not being able to figure out the motivations of this, that, whatever. And, um, and I realized that our leading Democrats, our politicians, Democratic politicians, really are um, in a, they're in a bad way. Um, they cannot figure out Trump's motivations at all. And they keep saying, he's wrecking the country. He's wrecking the country. But what he's really wrecking are all those corrupt rat lines that the Democrats had set up over the past decades. All those supply lines that were coming out of China and making us totally dependent on China so that China could get us by the short hairs. And they have us now. So the problem with the Democrats is that they are so corrupt, uh, the leading ones anyway. They're so far gone from what they used to stand for that they can't even imagine anymore what it is to act in accordance with ethical standards. They can't even begin to figure out why anyone would listen to the American people or act in a trustworthy manner on behalf of those people because they've forgotten that they were elected to work for the benefit of the American people. And instead, um, those politicians only act for their own selfish interest. And a lot of them are really um, coming from China. A lot of them are, are really uh, working a lot of those politicians are really working for China. They're, and they're working with the cabal, big businesses. They've been bought off. Lots and lots of politicians and CEOs and others have been bought off. And that is why we're in this, the place that we're in. And, and I don't want to single out the Democrats because it isn't just Democrats. They happen to be the, the mouthpiece, but they're the, the mouthpiece for a whole lot of people, Republicans and Democrats and uh, people who really aren't even aligned with either party. They're just doing their thing. They're doing their business and they're um, getting paid under the table left and right. Um, those, those people are problematic. So, and Barr points out that we have to begin to understand, I thought this, he went into quite a bit of detail here. We have to begin to understand that um, China is in control of Hollywood. Sadly, examples of American business bowing to China are legion. Take Hollywood. Hollywood's actors, producers, and directors pride themselves on celebrating freedom and the human spirit. And every year at the Academy Awards, Americans are lectured about how this country falls short of Hollywood's ideals of social justice. But Hollywood now regularly censors its own movies to appease the Chinese Communist Party, the world's most powerful violator of human rights. This censorship infects not only the versions of movies that are released in China, but also many that are shown in the United States theaters to American audiences. For example, the hit movie World War Z depicts a zombie apocalypse caused by a virus. The original version of the film reportedly contained a scene with characters speculating that the virus may have originated in China. But the studio, Paramount Pictures, reportedly told producers to delete the reference to China in the hope of landing a Chinese distribution deal. 
the deal never materialized. In the Marvel Studios blockbuster Doctor Strange, filmmakers changed the nationality of the major character known as the Ancient One, a Tibetan monk in the comic book. Changed it from Tibetan to Celtic. When challenged about this, a screenwriter explained that if you acknowledge that Tibet is a place and that he's Tibetan, you risk alienating one billion people. Or as the Chinese government might say, we're not going to show your movie because you decided to get political. These are just two examples of the many Hollywood films that have been altered one way or another to please the CCP. National Security Advisor O'Brien offered even more examples in his remarks. But many more scripts never see the light of day because writers and producers know not to test the limits. Chinese government censors don't need to say a word because Hollywood is doing their work for them. This is a massive propaganda coup for the Chinese Communist Party. An important piece for us to understand consciousness is that when you sit and watch TV, when you watch movies, when you listen to music, when you watch videos, what you're doing as you're watching those things on screen is, is shifting your brainwave patterning and your entire energy matrix to match that pattern long enough to enjoy it to understand it, to be entertained by it, but you never shift back to what you were exactly. Once you've been introduced to a concept and it comes in visually and auditorially and you produce chemicals that produce feelings, you are different from that point forward. And so what Barr points out is that China's been in control of Hollywood for years. And the result has been that a lot of the movies, you, can, you can't even get a movie made that is going to suggest that we might want to think for ourselves, do for ourselves, take care of ourselves. Um, and so um, he says the uh, couple things here. Um, globalization is and the ccp drum is not hospitable to freedom and and that disney from disney right on down all kinds of movies and training films and all sorts of of materials educational materials have been created and um and that uh, and the china funded a lot of that and they made Producers and directors take out anything that was suggestive that the Chinese Communist Party might be um, liable for anything that, you know, for any kind of, that might like make them look bad or make them look like they were doing something irresponsible. Um, so I think we need to understand that we've been uh, programmed from a lot of different angles. Um, especially in the bottom line, which is money. When you have to have money to survive, when you have to have money to buy water and to buy house and to buy car or to get to buy an airplane ticket to go visit your grandparents or, or, or to buy food because you're working somewhere and you can't, um, come, you can't park your house next to a stream and all the streams are polluted and you can't build a house anywhere without the approval of your local authorities and many of those local authorities are really listening to um, the Chinese, that, that Chinese uh, string that's pulling strings um, in big corporations, a lot of those people that are on big corporations are also on county boards and local um, ordinance uh, councils and things like that. They are very, very watchful. Uh, and so you have to have money in order to survive. And that is, is where they have us. Um, and that's really, I think, a very important 
consideration, what are we wanting to do about money? What do we want to do about our entertainment? Uh, what do we want to do about the fact that if we confront the cabal and the Communist Party, Chinese, with China is their front man for doing all this, um, and, and we can no longer get what we need, uh, what's the plan? <laughs> Uh, we do have a, a logistics plan supposedly in the works, but at this point in time, we're still in lockdown mode. We're still in drama mode. And I think we're coming to big drama um, come September through maybe Thanksgiving. Unfortunately, big, big trouble. So um, I think it's really important to understand that we have to do some very careful long-term planning. Barb points this out. Um, we have to reorganize, plan, um, implement, be consistent over the years. Um, and the scale of financing that has to happen is enormous. What are we going to do about money? There we are back to the whole money question again. So um, the... Uh, we have to build new companies and we have to we really have to rethink our entire world so let me come back to a very familiar question what do you want how do you want to live what kind of world do you want to live in daphne and i were talking earlier this evening about different worlds and and i think we probably need to talk some more about that um, and really share some ideas of, of and give ourselves permission uh, to have what we would love to have. So um, public and private, men and women, all the colors of the planet, we kind of have to work together. Why? As Barr says, our freedom depends on it. Because if we don't work together, we're going to go down one at a time. And the big uh, goal has been to collapse the U.S. If the U.S. goes down, the whole rest of it goes down and we are done for. So um, consider or take into consideration um, what are those connections and, and what kind of risk are we at? And, and several of you wrote and said, okay, I'm putting my hand in. Um, I think that's really wonderful. Thank you for that. Uh, we have to take a hand in recreating, redesigning, reorganizing, and implementing the world that we want to live in. Because if we don't do it for ourselves, somebody's going to do it for us. And we probably won't like what they're offering. So thank you. As all of these examples should make clear, the ultimate ambition of China's rulers isn't to trade with the United States. It is to raid the United States. American companies must understand the stakes. The Chinese Communist Party thinks in terms of decades and centuries, while we tend to focus on the next quarter's earning report. But if Disney and other American corporations continue to bow to Beijing, they risk undermining both their own future competitiveness and prosperity, as well as the classical liberal order that has allowed them to thrive. To secure a world of freedom and prosperity for our children and our grandchildren, the free world will need its own version of a whole of society approach in which the public and private sectors maintain their separation but work together collaboratively to resist domination and to win the contest for the commanding heights of the global economy. America has done that before. And if we rekindle our love and devotion of our country and each other, I am confident that we, the American people, the American government, and American business together can do it again. Our freedom depends on it. Thank you very much.